It's not how hard you pump, it's how you pump. But before you pull out of vibratory technology, try putting the right equipment in. Knowing the difference between axial and lateral vibrations is the key to solving your problems downhole. Let's dive in to learn how to control the downhole rotational behavior of your pipe, eliminate those destructive harmonics and inertia feedback from your BHA bit, and control your pipe. This is Ariana Karuk, CEO of PWS, a premier energy savings products company in oil and gas. Thanks for joining me for this tech talk on axial versus lateral vibrations. The drilling market of yesteryear offers several tools with cyclic vibration to break string downhole friction to further a drilling string or coil deployment beyond its elastic mechanical buckling point. This technology is currently built on fluid flow manipulation, resulting in driving either a pressure pulse or mechanical hammer or both acting along the axial plane of the string at any given amplitude and frequency. When we examine the effects to the downhole string and BHA to which this axial mechanical load force is applied, we have seen that there is a history of material fatigue damage to components and materials resulting in failed downhole equipment. This fatigue is the direct effect of applying variable axial cyclic loads under compression. This fatigue is only exasperated by placing the BHA or material under microbending stress moments. Okay, so why is everyone trying to hammer their problems away? Again, it's not how hard you pump in the hole, but how you pump in the hole. To further explain, let's dive into the marketplace and environments of these operations where these tools are required, illuminating why a lateral force is actually preferential to an axial one. And just maybe I'll be able to convince you with science to put your old red, blue, and green hammers away to control your pipe with the lateral vibration of torsional oscillation control technology. In drilling, we typically have three methods. Full rotary drilling, typically used with RSS and high string rotation. Partial with static slide drilling where no rotation is present. And hybrid rotary, low string rotation RSS below downhole motor on the BHA. What are the benefits of full rotary drilling? Hole cleaning, lower system pressure loss, greater directional control, greater horizontal distances can be achieved as the majority of vertical weight is available, fluid compatibility, and a smoother borehole. And what are the cons of full rotary drilling? Liable to high variable torsional oscillation, known industry-wide as you guessed it, stick slip, higher downhole ECDs, tricky point as cutting bed heights can be higher in the other two methods. Higher surface RPMs can convert to higher torque fluctuations and subsequent equipment limitations. It's expensive when compared to motor drilling and it requires defined set flow rates to be effective for RSS. What are the benefits of static slide drilling where no rotation is present? Low cost ensures bit RPM remains at a higher rate under a torque load, can provide more reliable build rates at a wider flow rate range. And the cons, high pressure loss added to the system, environmental concerns such as fluid, temp, etc., drills a larger hole in rotary defined by bent housing deflection angle, mechanical limitations, max weight on bit and reactive torque, bearing life and drive system, state or elastomer life, limits string RPM and can impact hole cleaning, which increases risk of wellbore issues and stocks. Finally, the benefits of hybrid rotary drilling, real-time rotary directional control, improved ROP, and the cons, double the system pressure loss, can induce greater shocks expressed on RSS and downhole tools below motor, adds complexity to any stock, runs downhole motor to upper mechanical limits 
which can limit run duration. And the life is severely reduced and downhole tool failure happens more often, costing time and increasing risk where string and vibrations are present above and below the motor. Okay, so now we understand how these tools work and the challenges presented to selecting the correct system. But is it that easy? The drilling environment adds additional complexities that need to be considered too. Let's say our geologist has given us well targets that are eight kilometers from our drilling rig. That's gonna mean a lot of pipe and lots of directional work, plus geomechanic considerations, as it's not all the same formation. Can we even drill it out with our rig? And how close to the edge do we get to the mechanical limitations? It's at these stages that vibration tools are considered to reduce torque loads and frictional loss to allow the previously mentioned drilling options to be used. Okay, so what's the selection process? They all break friction, right? Well, no, just as size matters in the whole, so does the way you generate controlled vibrations. There are three ways to do that. Natural harmonics, axial cyclic impact, and lateral inertia motion. Natural harmonics are not ideal. As to truly excite, we need to ensure we generate the same RPM frequency. However, by doing so, we can quickly cascade the system to extreme vibration events, which are uncontrollable. Okay, so this isn't ideal, but it always exists, so we need to remember it. Axial cyclic impact vibration tools, you know, those red, blue, and green hammers that pump without experience or finesse, this vibration is produced by generating a pressure pulse to drive a stack spring shock absorber. This tool requires a fixed flow rate to generate a pressure pulse sufficient to compress the spring and the discharge creates the impact force that is typically about two to four Gs, 12 to 16 times a second, which is pretty low by itself as a person experiences about 6.3 Gs on a good roller coaster. However, its high cyclic rate frequency is of note, but what needs to really be appreciated is the displaced mass and the stroke length as Gs are measured in force are only measured equal to Earth's gravitational force on a mass. So four times 80 kilopounds weight below this tool is rather a big number of applied force. This can be 180 tons applied to 12 to 16 times every second. This is obviously dependent on tool placement. Without getting too complicated, let's talk mechanics of these tools. If we look to cyclic axial loading fatigue, we need to consider where these tools fit in the design phase of placement. We also need to consider well position. Is it vertical, curved, or lateral section? As we need to know due to bending moment material stress that would be applied on this system with and without rotation. And first, we need to determine the maximum load that we can apply before reaching what we call the endurance limit of a material. This is simply the maximum amplitude of completely reversed stress a material can sustain for an unlimited number of cycles, axial impacts, before failure mode starts. Your hammer supplier calculates this for you, right? If they do, you also need to know how this number changes under stress, i.e. what dog leg is it bridged across, and how all the applied forces are not equal and the previous calculated endurance limit is now reduced. Let's also not forget that the RPMs that the string rotating at will change, what we call the stiffness coefficient as we are now spinning the pipe. This again changes the fatigue endurance limit for the application. As we've discussed, there is a lot to consider in de-risking this application as across a string and well bore, not all environmental and design points stay the same. But before we leave this mechanical discussion of axial vibration tools, we also need to consider fluid and flow rate as this too changes the true dynamic and will also reduce the final endurance 
fatigue limit of this tool's placement. Typical issues associated with using these tools are lower pen connection failure, twist offs, shear offs. When placed above complex RSS and LWD, tools can damage internal components, MWD signal interference, slim hole applications where these tools are placed above the VHA can fatigue and other physical connections as well as thinner walled connections, which see environments to which they also see material ballooning. And there are surface pressure limitations as these tools can add pressure waves of over 700 PSI per tool. These tools are stabilized in the hole generally, and as such can become a tripping concern and a cutting bottleneck with localized elevated ECDs. Now moving on to lateral inertia motion, the last vibration control method we will discuss. The principle of these tools in the past is based on rotating a mass off its geometric axis. This means the balance of rotation is uneven and occurs when the inertia axis of a rotating mass is displaced from and parallel to the axis of rotation. This type of system was initially developed to eliminate the torsional vibration damage generated on long motor drive shafts and gearing where torsional vibration defines the lifespan of these systems. This is achieved by inducing a resultant offset mass to the drive shaft, which balances the offset environmental twist forces. This is not visually pronounced at the rotary table as what would have been seen from an axial tool, as that tool is physically lifting and dropping mass. Lateral tools, however, are inducing what is called high amplitude oscillation wave, which is designed to control the string eccentricity and contain the string in a fixed state by eliminating subsequent forces. This creates a lateral oscillation wave, which when the tools are placed at nodal points, allows the string to break low end friction, but also remove the undesired lateral vibrations which give rise to the stick split phenomenon. Committed to innovation, PWS took these principles even further to break the mold on what was known and to bring forth patented torsional oscillation control technology, the Zoom technology series that addresses additional principles and coupling inertia so that offset masses can be tuned to create a greater amplitude pneumatic percussion wave. This in turn changes the string behavior and returns it to a steady state. With this technology, you can stop whirling away your energy into the drill pipe and well bore and control the rotational behavior of your pipe, truly eliminating those destructive harmonics and inertia feedback from your BHA. In short, if stick slip is your problem, put your axial hammer shock tool away and see the benefits of lateral vibration with the patented torsional oscillation control technology of the Zoom. Less than 180 PSI pressure drop, increased rates of penetration, reduced BHA wear and downhole tool failures, reduced well bore fatigue, no complex internal valve systems, 70 plus day life run, on-site 60 minute servicing, 33% energy savings on operations, 10% AFE savings. Sometimes the solution is that simple. New technology is here. Innovation is our future. And I don't know about you, but I always have the latest technology, especially down home. It's time to upgrade your tool, boys. Thanks so much for joining me for another Tech Talk. To learn more about our patented technology and our company, visit our website at pws-ce.com.